Fly a fair nation. Fly a fair nation. Fly Thank you for tuning into the Pointless Talks podcast. On this week of my foolishness, <laughs> I'm talking about a bunch of different things because I've been gone. I haven't talked about anything for a while. So I'm going to do like quick recaps on a bunch of different things. So first thing, you know, really quick, that cape that Lena Waithe had on at <laughs> Met Gala, that shit gave me all the life like everything like i remember when i saw it, i was like oh my like i literally instantly took a screenshot because i was on twitter and i saw it and i was like yo that is dope so i mean i know she's really big on um visibility for the culture and the community and that's another reason that you know i do this podcast also because so people can see themselves in more than just the mirror. You get me? Like, in media, in radio, in, like, it's all media, but in the world. Like, letting people know that, hey, you're not alone and this shit is okay. She's out here successful. She's at the fucking gala. Like, you know what I'm saying? So that was dope for me. So, I mean, I saw that and I was like, that's what's up. Um, there's something that was brought to my attention the other day, which I was not aware of. And apparently, um, Bermuda, same-sex marriage is legal in Bermuda. So here's the kicker. It's legal, right? So last year, May 5th, 2017, it became legal. And what was, what was the article say? Okay, the Supreme Court of Bermuda issued a ruling on that date declaring that same-sex couples have the legal right to marry in the territory. Now... I'm pretty sure all the LGBTQ people there were ecstatic about this news. Then later on, you know what I'm saying, there was a bill passed in December saying that that's going to be removed. I mean, I saw that there were a lot of people who were not pleased with the idea that, you know, Bermuda was allowing. I saw a lot of people saying, oh, my gosh, Bermuda, you're letting us down. What are you celebrating? What are you like? What are you trying to say? Basically, like. Why are you making this legal? And it's, what is it, on February 7, 2018, it's basically saying that the they received the royal assent for it and it will come effect if the 1st of June that it's no longer going to be legal. Like, But on the bright side of that, anybody who got married between that time, it's still going to be like legally recognized. Now, that's fine and dandy on one end, but then on the other end, it's like, why? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, if you made it legal, you went through all the hop off about it and found a way for it to come through. The bill was passed and everything. I guess you guys had a petition and enough people signed it to say no. And that's it. So that's a bummer. However, I did see that, you know, Carnival Cruise is supporting the LGBTQ um allowance of them getting married and their funding efforts to bring back gay marriage so i saw that and they're saying that you know people who are aboard that carnival cruise ship like as long as it docks in not just docks like if i think that's like if it's a home base is in bermuda they legally have the right to marry on board and it will be recognized in bermuda so they're trying to get that shit like back on track so that's what's up with Carnival Cruise. You know, maybe I'll support y'all and go on a cruise one day and stack up some chips. But it's, it's, yeah, that's, <laughs> I saw that, like, because it's crazy because I saw it and I was like, oh, shit, I didn't know you could get married in Bermuda. And then the next story afterwards, no, not happening. And, you know, since they're getting rid of it, Carnival Cruise can no longer perform same-sex marriages on its Bermuda registered ships. So no matter where in the world the ship is, when the wedding takes place, it's not going to be recognized because it's not legal. It's not going to be legal anymore in Bermuda past that date. So Carnival Cruise released a statement that it would provide financial, civil, and public relations support to Out Bermuda, which is an organization, LGBTQ, that submitted a summons to the Supreme Court of Bermuda declaring that the DPA is unconstitutional, which is basically the affidavit that, you know, they wanted to get rid of the law that gay marriage is legal. So... It says, while we always abide by the laws of the countries we sail to and from, we believe travel and tourism brings people and cultures together in powerful ways. Carnival said in a statement, as a result, we believe it is important to stand by the LGBTQ community in Bermuda and its many allies to oppose any actions and that uh, any actions that restrict travel and tourism. Immediately after the passage of the DPA, many Internet activists called to boycott Bermuda 
by canceling vacations, believing that the absence of tourism dollars would pres- pressure Bermuda's government into reinstating same-sex marriage. The hashtag gained celebrity support from Ellen DeGeneres, Patricia Arquette, Susan Orman, the whole boycott Bermuda. And, you know, however, some LGBT Bermudians believe that a boycott may not be the most effective manner to bring same-sex marriage back to the island territory. So, you know what I'm saying? It's, <sighs> it's ridiculous. Because I've always said, like, why are straight people so concerned with gay people's lives? Like, let queer people live their life. If What is them getting married doing for you? Like, what is that? How is that hindering you in your day-to-day life? You get me? Like... It's, I don't, I personally don't understand it and I probably never will because I believe in letting people live their life. Like, as long as you're not interfering with mine, if you're not affecting how my day to day life runs, how my children, my family, my husband, my wife, my parents, like, as long as it's not affecting them, like, what's the big deal? So there's that. But I know over the weekend, everybody was going crazy about this royal wedding. You know, and I would be a fool to not even mention it a little bit. I have my views on the chaos surrounding it because I personally, I don't know anything about this Megan girl. Like, I don't know nothing about her except that she's mixed. Her mom's black. Her dad's in a hospital somewhere. Um, She's marrying a prince. That's all I know. That's That's more than I care to know. I really couldn't care less about it because, I mean... <laughs> Okay, I don't care about celebrity lives as a whole. It's not something that I, you know what I'm saying, some people keep up with these things and they know every aspect of these people's lives. Like, I was at work and some lady comes in and she's like, oh, you're missing the royal wedding, da-da-da-da. And in my head, I'm like, you're missing it too because you're here with me. (laughs) But she was just like, and then she ended up going on a tangent talking to me about, you know, how her relationship with her family is strained and how that's, weird and this that and the next and how her and prince probably like met on a blind date or some like she had like a whole synopsis of these people's lives and i'm just like what are you doing with your life ma'am like what how is how is your love life going you know what i'm saying but i know that a lot of Korean people were up on this i mean a lot of americans were watching it too but I work in a predominantly Caribbean neighborhood. So, like, literally at least four people came in and were talking to me about it. Meanwhile, I'm worrying about having to swim through the damn parking lot because South Florida got rained the fuck out. If y'all came here for sweet heat, uh, y'all got some rain. I know y'all got some rain. It was not the sunshine state for y'all. But I'm worried about catching a cold. And I did end up catching a cold. That's why I sound like this. But they were in there, like, talking to me about this royal wedding. And, okay. I do know that the pastor did cut up. I was here. <laughs> I was here for him cutting up. Like, he gave them a black ass ceremony. Like, he he did the thing. And I'm just like, for someone who doesn't identify as black, all the aspects that you can tell she had an input on in this wedding were very ethnic. Like, where you found this reverend from, this minister? Where, where, where did you find him? Right? Like, okay, but you don't, I, whatever. That's your business. But in reference to that, there was a Jamaican-born reverend who offered prayer at the royal wedding. And I was like, I know their family must be super proud, but it was a woman. <laughs> so Reverend Rose Hudson Wilkin, an Ang- Anglican priest, originally from Mobe, Montego Bay, is chaplain to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II and the 79th chaplain appointed to the House of Commons in the United Kingdom. She's the first person of Caribbean descent to hold that position, and she's the first woman to serve in the role in more than 350 years. Girl. So now she's had the role in the historic wedding of Prince Harry, fifth in line to the throne, to American actress Meghan Markle at St. George's Chapel in Windsor. So shout out to her. You know what I'm saying? Apparently, she delivered a prayer from the nave of the chapel after the couple was declared husband and wife. And apparently, since November 2014, she's been priest in charge of St. Mary at Hill, City of London, in addition to being chaplain to the Queen and chaplain to the Speaker of the House of Commons. She's a priest vicar at Westminster Abbey. And she her resume is lit. Like, she done, she done did her shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She's, where is it? She was an officer in the church army and served as St. Francis, an arm of St. James Parish, before she moved to London. Then her husband, who was also trained in the church army, and they both subsequently became ordained ministers. 
they received their holy orders. Like, she, you know, Google. But apparently, one of my peoples was over there, you know, doing her thing. Uh, But, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I don't understand the fascination, right? Because I have my bias. My first thing is, I even said this on somebody's calm post. They said something about, you know, the excitement behind the wedding and everything. And my response was something to the extent that, how is it that you guys celebrate a nation so highly? Like, y'all love talking about the queen. When Princess Diana passed away, so many Jamaicans ball out. Like, like that was your sister. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was your family. Like, so many people feel so connected to the queen and their the royal family and all of this. And on one stand, there's some people who be like, you know, the real royal family is in Africa. Now, there's some people like myself who is like, dog, you worship in a nation that had you oppressed. How do you celebrate your independence and your emancipation and everything from a nation that you also celebrate? Like, you're happy to be free from them, but you still... Like, you still worship them. Like, you still, like, not to say that you're supposed to worship them or you were worshiping them to begin with, but the United Kingdom don't necessarily fuck with y'all. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you could tell by some of the faces from, you know what I'm saying, in the chapel while the pastor was doing his speech. They, them faces were side-eyeing and what is this? And you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not, it's not an equal relationship. Like, y'all look to them like, you know almost like a deity like almost and it's it's not the same it's not an equal level of respect or appreciation or adoration whichever the case is and I mean I can go on a whole tangent about you know finding your own king and queen to represent and uplift and celebrate but it's y'all gonna do what y'all want (laughs) regardless you know what I'm saying I just feel like I just feel like that's crazy that whole idea baffles me because literally like caribbean people like y'all love talking about the king and the queen and you know well no queen right now but i said queen <laughs> but <laughs> you know what I'm saying prince harry and the royal family and when this one get married and the next one get married and you know what I'm saying they have pickney and okay what about your love life you know what I'm saying like okay whatever but sorry let me go back to this but you know what I'm saying? Certainly, the Reverend was saying, she says that certainly the Montego Bay Jamaican upbringing influenced me and helped me to mold and shape my career and the choice of career. Yeah, I can see that. You know what I'm saying? Um, There's also something I saw that said that Jamaicans represent the largest number of foreign born blacks in the United States, second highest among black Caribbean immigrants with college degrees. So basically, in the United States, people that, well, sorry, black people that aren't born in the United States, that are in the United States, Jamaicans represent the largest number. Whoa. On a love far any? My God. <laughs> but I'm here, so I can't say nothing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And apparently we're the second highest among blacks, black Caribbean immigrants with college degrees. So I saw that and I thought, yeah. Because, I mean, you can go just about anywhere in the United States and find a Jamaican. Like, anywhere. And I talked about this before because I'm trying to figure out how some of y'all end up in these parts of the world. And I'm just like, who took you there? Who who picked you up and dropped you off there? So, there's that. But it's saying that among Caribbean nationals who make up a large percentage of foreign-born blacks in the U.S., Jamaica ranks fourth of the top five Caribbean nations among Caribbean immigrants with college degrees. Huh. Guyana ranks first, with Jamaica second, Trinidad and Tobago third, Haiti is fourth, and the Dominican Republic fifth. The largest number of immigrants from the Caribbean and United States are from Cuba. Yes, yes. Followed by individuals from the Dominican Republic, Jamaica, and Haiti. Rounding out top five is Trinidad and Tobago. Yes, especially living in Miami and having lived in New York, I can definitely see that because all of those countries that I just mentioned are people that, you know, I see a very large population of. So I definitely can see and agree with that. But it's saying that 58 percent of black immigrants in the U.S. are American citizens. Ooh, 
In 2016, 8% of blacks in the U.S. were second-generation Americans or those defined as being born in the U.S. but with at least one foreign-born parent. Black immigrants and their children represent a total of 18% or nearly one-fifth the population in the United States. So, we are here. Like, we, we definitely are here. But we are the largest population of black immigrants in the United States. That's... We look about with Talawa. That's what I say. <laughs> you know what I'm That's... Yeah, like I can't even I can't even dispute that one. Like I have to agree with that one. Like <laughs> you know, what I'm saying um, about another poll that I looked up um, about United States population, um, the LGBT population in the United States. Now I need to find a poll for LGBT Caribbeans, <laughs> but good luck with that because a lot of y'all don't even you know outwardly identify, and I can accept and understand why, but. Um, Apparently, the poll says that the LGBT population in the United States is estimated at 4.5%. Um, this study was actually posted earlier today, May 23rd, and you can read the whole article on cnsnews.com. I don't know how, you know, credible they are, but that's what I'm reading. Y'all can correct me if y'all find some better news. But results from a year-long survey conducted in 2017 show that the Estimated LGBT population in the United States is now at 4.5%, and the biggest increase in LGBT identification has been among millennials, those people born between 1980 and 1999. So, survey says that women are most likely to identify as lesbian, gay, bisexual, or transgender than men. Obviously, we talk about this all the time, you know, easier for women to come out because lesbianism is, <laughs> is that a word, is more easily accepted than two boys loving them, each other. So the ratio for that is 5.1% for women, whereas it's 3.9% for men. So there's that's, that's a pretty decent jump. But also it says that more people in low-income brackets identify as LGBT than people in high-income brackets. Huh. So... Since 2012, they've been conducting these interviews and these surveys, and the question they're really asking is, do you personally identify as lesbian, gay, bisexual, or transgender? In 2017, when they asked these questions, 4.5% said yes to that question, and in 2012, the percentage was 3.5%. So we see a bit of a jump there. Now, the percentage of millennials who identify as LGBT expanded from 7.3% to 8.1% from 2016 to 17 and it's up 5.8 percent since 2012 so they're saying that you know by contrast the basically the lgbt percentage in generation x <laughs> those born from 65 to 79 was up only 0.2 percent from 2016 to 2017 and there was no change last year in the percentage among baby boomers so 46 to 64 and traditionalists born prior to 46 Y'all really asking people born before 1946 if they gay? <laughs> like, really? Yeah, y'all sitting down with somebody born in 19... Yo, they 60, what's that? 60, 70, 70 odd years old. You sitting there asking them about <laughs> they gay? It's like, I mean, hey, it's it's fair. You're asking all over the board. So, I mean, I can't knock it, but that's wild. You asking people before 1946, hey, are you gay, lesbian, bisexual, or trans? But... I'm pretty sure at that age, you're like, mind your fucking business. This ain't got nothing to do with you. <laughs> so, LGBT identification is lower as age increases, although there is a particularly large jump between millennials and those in the next oldest generation, defined as Generation X. I can see that. Because, I mean, like I just said, the older you get and you're in your ways, whether you accept yourself for who you are or you're living a life that seems more comfortable to you based on what society tells you is okay... Whether you are gay or not, or whether you've accepted or looked into or experimented with your sexuality, I feel like it's becoming more and more, quote unquote, normal, because it is normal. I don't want to say, quote unquote, it is normal, but it's becoming more accepted or more easy for you to go out and say, hey, I have this feeling. I want to act on it. I want to see where it goes. Whereas before, it was just completely a no all across the board. There was no one necessarily talking about LGBT rights or equality or, you know, loving yourself even. Like, there were so many talks that weren't happening before I was born that are happening now. Like, even when I was a child, like, 
there's so many different conversations because, I mean, like I said before, I can remember a time when they had a token black person on the commercial. Like, this person's here because they don't want somebody to say it's racist. They don't have any black people. You get me? So, I mean, we're evolving. Things are changing. They're tackling it one thing at a time, you know? And it just so happens that right now where we are, LGBTQ is where a lot of people are, like, trying to bring light to. You get me? Like, trying to get people to understand that, yo, this doesn't change who the person is on the inside. It's just who they have sex with, who they have feelings for. So I can understand why, you know what I'm saying, these rates like these um results are over the board the way that they are because like i said you can't teach an old dog new tricks and that's sad but i mean in most cases that is what it is because you've lived your whole life this one way and then someone is telling you hey think of this a little bit different now you can say that to a 10 year old you can say that to a 20 year old you're saying that now to a 40 year old a 60 year old you know 70 like damn near 80 year old it's not as easy a transition. Some people, like I said, based on personality, based on mindset, quick to run with it, whatever, let people live their life. And some people are just, no, that's not right. And then there's also people who believe, you know, the Bible says you're not supposed to. So it's it's really all over the board. I really want to know where they actually did these surveys, though. I need to look into that and figure out where exactly they did these surveys because they've been doing it since 2012. For them to come to the conclusion that it's mostly low-income households or low-income people that identify as LGBTQ, uh, maybe, you know, but again, like, where is this study being conducted? What exactly are you asking people? What exactly are you, not what are you asking, but where are you finding them? How do you target the people that you ask? Like, you get me? Is this a mixed ratio of races? Is this one specific race? Like, I need more details about that because all it's telling me is woman income. You get me? So I would like to know more about that. So it even goes so far as to say that, you know, the survey showed that LGBT identification is highest among those people making less than 36000 a year. Wow. And regardless, whenever they did the study, each time they did it, they realized that women continue to be more likely to identify as LGBT than men. And the gender cap expanded last year. However, overall, 5.1% of women in 2017 identified as LGBT compared to 39 of men. Whereas back in 2012, the population was 3.5 female, 3.4 male. That is a huge gap. I feel like that's basically, you know, adding to my statement that it's easier for women to come out and accept and act on their curiosities and questioning of their sexuality than it is for men. Because I don't think it's necessarily that they aren't LGBT. Maybe they just haven't explored it. I'm not trying to say everybody's gay. I'm really not. (laughs) But I can see how it could be something that, you know, you don't open up to admit to or speak on, even if it's something that you feel. I can definitely see that. So that's interesting. Apparently... They did telephone interviews. 340,604 adults, ages 18 and older, oh, living in all 50 states and District of Columbia between January 2nd and December 30th. So that's that. They said the margin of error was give or take 0.1%. So, I mean, okay. (laughs) You know, like, y'all can get that. I wanted to talk about... um, this completely left field. I wanted to talk about an article I saw the other day. Um, I realized that Crystal and Fury talked about it, and I was like, I don't really want to go in his ham about it, but I had this save that I really wanted to touch on it because I hate people. <laughs> um, so Bob Marley's granddaughter, right? She's supposed to be suing California police because she and a couple of her friends were checking out of an Airbnb and got the police called on them, basically for being black while checking out. Like, just being black in a nice neighborhood or whatever the case is. Because apparently, the next-door neighbor to the Airbnb that they were renting, the neighbor waved at them and they didn't wave back. So, they called the police on them and said that they were robbing the Airbnb. Now, it was broad fucking daylight. Broad daylight. Like, sun was out shining. Like, if you watch the video, there's no obscurities. There's nothing that is a little cloudy. But it was broad daylight. You feel me? 
who robs a house with two other niggas in broad daylight? Like, one, okay? And the police show up, and they're on some, like, well, at least it didn't go bad type of shit. Like, on some, at least we don't have you in handcuffs. At least we don't have guns on you. At least we don't have you on the floor. At least, you know what I'm saying? Kind of like saying, we're treating you better than we treat the others. So you should be grateful that we're we're handling this the way that we are. Like, go fuck yourself. Really? You know what I'm saying? Like, no. Like, be realistic. Okay? Me, personally, I'm not friendly at all. Like, I'm not friendly. Like, if you catch me on a good day, I might speak. I might say hi. I might smile. But the end of a vacation, I'm ready to leave. I'm ready to go. Listen, I'm packing my shit. I got to make sure I got everything I got. I done moved into these people for however many days I was there. I'm ready to go. I don't want to have to call y'all back and be like, hey, did I leave, you know, my cosmetic bag? Whatever the case. I don't. I'm ready to go. I don't talk to strangers for the most part. Some random white lady across the street is waving at me. What the fuck is she looking at me for? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's me personally, though. That's me. Not everybody is like that, but also not everybody is just happy-go-lucky. Like, some people, hey, oh, my God, how are you? Whatever, whatever. And I guess that's what the lady was expecting because she was. they were in her neighborhood, and that's, you know what I'm saying? But what really annoyed me about it also was that the person who rented the Airbnb to them was like, all they had to do was be polite to my neighbor. What the fuck? Bitch, I'm paying you to stay in your house for a couple of days. Like, I don't have to do shit but fucking die. Like, why do I have to say hi to your neighbor because she said hi to me? Why is it that people feel so entitled to your courtesy? Like, I've never understood that. And it goes back to another subject that I've always talked about was, you know, the idea that women should smile. Like, some of y'all probably heard that statement just now come out my mouth and said, what the fuck is that supposed to mean? Why shouldn't you smile? Dog, if I don't fucking feel like smiling, I don't feel like smiling. You know what I'm saying? Like, my part-time job is in customer service, right? I have resting bitch face. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, on any given day, apparently I look like an axe murderer. Like, I look like I'm ready to kill somebody. You get me? But you say hey to me, my face lights up. Hey, how are you? You know what I'm saying? I'll talk to you. Especially while I'm at work. I'm getting paid to talk to you. I'm not going to be rude just because, you know, it's Monday. So, I've had pe- like, the, the best way for you to get me not to smile is to tell me to smile. You tell me to smile, I'm going to look at you like, go fuck yourself. But I can't say that because I'm at work. So, I just look at you like you're dumb. Like, and I blink repeatedly until you feel awkward. Because why are you telling me to smile? It's, but it's always old men who do it too. Like, and it's always in a creepy way. It's never like, Oh, what's wrong with you, sis? Smile. It's usually, you're so beautiful. Why don't you smile? Like, ew. Like, thank you for the compliment, but no. The lingering eyes and the body language and everything else that comes with it. Like, most times when women are being told to smile by someone of the opposite gender or someone that is attracted to them, it's rarely ever in a platonic way. It's usually in some form of give me pleasure. You get me? Like, it's usually in some kind of way, like, that says that, I deserve your courtesy. I would deserve your politeness. I deserve for you to come to me peacefully and come to me. Like, it's just, oh, like, <laughs> you know what I'm Like, it's gross. Like, it's gross. And if you know somebody who does this and think it's okay, if you do this, this shit's not okay. If you don't know somebody, don't walk up to random people and tell them to smile. Don't do it. Especially you don't know how people feel. Like, you don't know somebody's having a bad fucking day. You some, go smile. My cat just died. Like, don't tell me to smile right now, okay? Like, I'm having a bad day, got a flat tire, whatever. Oh, well, you woke up this morning and life is great. Yes, that is one way to look at it, but don't do that. You know what I'm saying? And it's it's ridiculous because you get people all the time who, you know what I'm saying, some people are cheery, some people are chipper, some people are, you know, always in a positive, happy whatever mood just because someone isn't smiling it doesn't always mean that something is wrong you know what I'm saying like I've said <laughs> this before and it's funny but it's sad at the same time and it's, I'm a product of my upbringing but you talk to any Jamaican like you live in Jamaica and you see somebody smile all the time they're gonna quickly ask if you're fool fool or something wrong with it like what but you just a smile smile so far where I smile for like you know what I'm saying like and that's a horrible brainwashing and it's something I probably should unlearn. It's toxic. But at the same time, like, life is good. I'm chilling. I'm just not smiling. I have a resting bitch face. If y'all have seen <laughs> my Twitter profile from my personal page, my face been like this, like, 
baby mean mug always <laughs> ain't nothing wrong i'm at the beach having a good time i just sun is in my eye i don't know you know what I'm saying but that's that's just something else that i i mean that tied into the whole thing for me because maybe they didn't see the lady waving at them you know what I'm saying? Maybe she waved and they were preoccupied. Maybe they had shit in their hands while they did. Regardless of the fact, you don't call the police on someone because they didn't wave at you. She knew they weren't fucking robbing a place. Like, she knows. Like, your next door neighbor to this lady, I'm pretty sure you see people coming in and out of this place all the time that you've never seen before. People that you see come in for two days or three days or a week or however long they rent the Airbnb for. How long she been doing this Airbnb? I'm pretty sure that, that they weren't her first guests pretty sure you know what i'm saying like that's fucked up that's fucked up and the only reason she called the police was because they're black that's the only reason fuck the courtesy if it's the courtesy you're talking about it's because she didn't get the courtesy because black people did not give her the courtesy and you know i don't want to go on this rant and be like you know white people feel like but in all honesty some white people do feel entitled to all levels of acceptance and you know acknowledgement from black people because they feel like they're superior or whatever the case is like this is their america or whatever like no and you can't you can't just be like okay well you know as a police officer at least the situation isn't escalated it escalated because y'all showed up it escalated because y'all felt the need to question me at this point because someone called you and said hey these three black girls are robbing my next door neighbor's house Okay, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If y'all show up and I'm still there, but then again, it's a white neighborhood, so they probably showed up pretty quickly, okay? But, I mean, that's that. But, I mean, <laughs> I just, ugh. like, I I kind of want to talk about this school shooting that happened the other day, but that's, ugh. apparently it was three and seven days. I heard about one. It's disgusting to me how regular these occurrences are three school shootings within seven days we're not going to talk about how many we've had since the year started we're in may now what the fuck and guess what ar-15s 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 y'all don't see a problem y'all don't see a pattern y'all don't see that there's something that needs to be done like I don't I don't like to harp on things, but when things need to change and things aren't changing because the people who are able to change it don't see that it needs to be changed and innocent people are getting hurt. Children are getting hurt. Children are getting killed. For what? Because gun control? Like I've said this on a show before, like I am an avid, like I am in complete support of, you know what I'm saying, the amendment right to bear arms, like second amendment right. Like, I'm here for it. Have your gun, be strapped up. The revolution is coming. We gotta be able to take care of ourselves. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, whatever the case is. But y'all need to put a lid on that shit at the same time because there should be certain restrictions, certain guidelines. Okay, wow, you passed the background to us. Okay, wow, you waited the seven days to get the gun. You, like, you're over 18. Okay, but what is your mental state? Like, what what activity have you been carrying on with within the last three to four months? Like, you know what I'm saying? A lot of it is just based on sales. And people who are so for gun rights are, a lot of people aren't even looking at it longer than you can't take my guns. Nobody's talking about taking your guns. We're talking about keeping guns away from people that are in, unstable, keeping guns away from harming girls like girls i'm reading something sorry <laughs> like harming children like why is it that if i send my child to school i have to worry about if they're gonna give me a phone call before the end of the day saying there's been a fatality there's been a shooting there's been you know what I'm saying your child may be in danger why why school should be probably the next like probably the safest place for my child to be you know what i'm saying like security y'all got faculties like <sighs> i wasn't supposed to talk about this <laughs> i was not supposed to be talking about this like i just no i'm it bothers me it really does because i think about you know 
I want to have kids one day. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to have to worry about if I can send my child to school. Granted, I don't want to send my child out to deal with strangers for the first year or so of their life if I can afford such a luxury. But at the same time, you're hearing all this shit. And it's like, from the time I was in school to now, these things, these casualties are way too frequent. Like, I was in school and I heard about Columbine. That was Columbine. And then something else happened shortly thereafter. And then, you know, okay. But now it's like, you got three a week? How many since the year started? I don't even want to look up that number. Like, I don't. And this has nothing to do with LGBT or Caribbean or anything. But at the same time, it's affecting all of us. Especially if you live in the United States. Like, it's affecting all of us. Shit, even my bae. I'm hearing that, you know, they're finding all these guns and everything in Jamaica. And, you know, all this other shit. Like, uh, for what? <laughs> for what? For what? For what? Like, what is this? You kill everybody, and then what? You kill yourself. You end up being famous. Is that what it is? Like, I've me and my father were having a conversation about that because I think I probably touched on this here before. If I didn't, okay. But if I did, I'm sorry. But we're talking about was it Charles Manson? Um, how in Jamaica when you know his trial was going on originally, and they caught him and everything was going on. How in Jamaica they said, hey, serial, whatever, whatever, Charles Manson captured, case, whatever. In America, that that man was all over everything. You on every news station. And if he's not on the news, there's a little headline at the bottom of the screen running across telling you every detail of the courts, like everything that's going on. And I feel like in this country, anything you do gains you celebrity. You feel me? Like you could be a mass murderer and... Your claim to fame is that you killed a whole bunch of people. You ain't never did nothing in your life. You was a whatless, dirty ass, and you never did nothing good for nobody. But you go kill off a whole bunch of innocent people. You go rape off a whole bunch of people. You did all type of something to unthinkable things to children. Whatever the case is, guess what? It's not necessarily cele- celebrating you, but you become a celebrity because they put your name in the pa- every paper. Your face is on every front page. You are all over the news everywhere you turn and then people are talking about it people are talking about it so you become a household name charles manson what i know about charles manson how old was i when charles manson was you know what I'm saying like come on they got tv shows about this shit granted i love me a law and order and you know svu and criminal minds and all of that i love them shows and it's great it's fictional it's based on real stories it's sad to hear but these people that do these things a lot of them do this for that outcome. I don't know if America has thought about the psychology behind that. Because a lot of people are nobody-ass people in real life. They, Like I said, they never done shit in their life. They never done nothing positive. Probably dropped out of school, didn't do well. They, You know, like, for whatever the hell the reason is. Maybe you had an abusive childhood. Maybe your parents were trash. Maybe you felt unloved. Whatever the case is. You decided you weren't able to make something of yourself. So you wanted... You wanted a name. You wanted people to know who you are. And you decide, you know what? I'm going to go shoot this shit up. You feel me? I'm. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be famous. Make me famous. And then they come in and you catch them. If they don't kill themselves, you know what I'm saying? They cop out. They don't want to go to jail because especially the ones that touch children, they they be the ones to quick to kill themselves because they know you go to prison. That's one thing them niggas don't play with is, you know what I'm saying, child abuse. So... You go through all of that, and then you're famous now. Now you're in a cell. You're looking at yourself on the screen like, yeah, that's me. That's me. I did that. You feel me? And you're in the paper. Whether they, And if you die, you die knowing, hey, tomorrow my face is front page news. Y'all giving them what they want. First, y'all need to get rid of the guns, though. Like, cut that shit out, dog. Like, America really needs to do better on so many different levels. Like, for this to be the land of the free, like, this is the goal that so many people want to come to. Like, so many people love off and covet America. Me, personally, I want to go home. I want to go there. Make sure I get my little paper them together and, you know, zoops, gone back in my yard. But a lot of people want to come to America. A lot of people love off America. Love, 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 love. For what? As a black person, like, you love this country, especially if, as a black person that, isn't from here isn't wasn't born here you know what i'm saying i love i go home i yes so nice like i told my little sister that the other day like you want to come you want to come up far and so bad but listen 
me want go home. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, no, and no man, nothing a sweet but foreign, nothing, 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 nothing. Like, no man, you have little benefits and you know certain things where you can do and opportunity and whatever. But you think about the status of this country. You think about the debt this country is in. You think about there's so many things that's fucked up. <laughs> and what is America doing about itself? My one of my biggest issues with America, America is nosy as fuck and America is in everybody's business. America is in everybody's business. America be quick to give you some fake news about somebody else to cover up some shit that's really going on that they don't want you to focus on. Like y'all remember that what was it? The dress that was it blue or was it gold or champagne? Whatever the fuck that shit was. Now it's that do you hear yeah whatever. I didn't even listen to the audio to find out what it was. I just kept seeing it all over and I kept hearing people talk about it. But when I heard about it, I was like, what are they trying to distract you from now? You know what I'm saying? Y'all watch the news. Listen, that is one thing I do not voluntarily watch. If I'm watching the news, it's because somebody else put it on and I just don't feel moved enough to change it. I do not like the news. I don't watch the news. I don't. It's not something I look to because ain't nothing good ever on it. And if they talk about something good, they talk about a celebrity life. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like. It's what is that? But uh, I'm ranting now. <laughs> so we're gonna wrap this up. Same as always, you know, please don't forget, follow me on all the social media things. Um we're on Google Play Music. For those of y'all who have not yet heard, we are on Google Play Music. I mean, we was on Apple Podcasts and SoundCloud and all that stuff, but we have recently joined the Google Play Music app. If you have an Android and you have Google Play Music, all you have to do is just type in Pointless Talks and subscribe. You know, like, listen, subscribe, share, rate, all that good shit. Um, everything else is Pointless Talks. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, SoundCloud, Apple Music, Player FM, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm trying to get on a couple more platforms. I'm working on it. But, yeah, that's, find us there. It's the Pointless Talks podcast. Uh, rate us, like us, give us five stars. Keeping a bad mind feelings to yourself because, you know, bad mind never win. But whether you got here on purpose or by fate, thank you again for tuning in to the Pointless Talks podcast. Mm-hmm.